A warm welcome to this talk. It's actually Monday the 16th of October and I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Philip Cruz who is uh, talking all the way from Zurich and I want to start off with an apology Philip this morning because I misattributed your nationality on our previous video when I was talking about your address to the European Parliament in Strasbourg so if you can forgive me thank you for coming on. Absolutely thank you so much for having me dear John Campbell and there is no worry and no need for apologies. <laughs> uh, we are all in this one global family and nationalities don't matter in this respect. Thank Absolutely. You. Why should people watch this video, Philip? What is this concern about? Well, I'm about to deepen what I said in the European Parliament on the 13th of September. I'm personally concerned about most of all the new international health regulations because they will bring about a regime by which uh, the international, the World Health Organization will be granted the power to at any time suspend our constitutions, to suspend our human rights and international law and with permanent effect, thereby assuming and abusing global power and ultimately causing harm, maximum harm to people's health, maximum harm to economies and to our democracies. And this is all happening now by default. Yes, this is right. Um, negotiations are underway and the vote on what I just mentioned, that is the international health regulations, the amendments to it, that vote will take place next May in Geneva at the occasion of the World Health Assembly. And then uh, right afterwards, um, this, these amendments will come into force by way of an automatism. There will be no vote in the uh, national parliaments and, and therefore we should uh, be worried about and make sure that ultimately these international health regulations amendments will not come into place. In my view, even the negotiations should be stopped immediately. So this is a really, this sounds like a really stealthy process by an international organization to take over many aspects of what should be uh, d domestic governance. Yes, absolutely. Um, they claim the power uh, on the, the total power on the pretext of protecting us against biological threat. And what they do is they use and abuse this pretext to self-authorize them to ultimately impose on us all kind of measures where nobody knows the effect of them that can be harmful and without asking us and obviously without any informed consent. Most of all, they are totally immune. They are not subject to any liability, the officials from this World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're not saying it's true in this situation, but threats can be generated to facilitate a response sometimes. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, there will be a new widened concept of what is called uh, public health emergency of international concern. So the emergency for a pandemic, the widening concept comprises things like even climate change, uh, uh, reduction of um, uh, the, you know, <laughs> um, um, you know, the CO2 level will matter. Uh, all kinds of elements can give rise uh, to a proclamation of a new pandemic. And, and so we have uh, the total, um, you know, rule of emergency logic um, threatening us to become the new normal and our constitutional normal to become the absolute exception in the future. So the WHO can define whatever it basically likes as a threat and then impose these draconian powers on individual nation states, whether there's a real threat there or not. Yes, absolutely. And most significantly, they will define what kind of medical substance they deem to be the only ones that shall be applied by people and how much uh, that should be done 
the percentage, the coverage of uh, these uh, injections on uh, all the population uh, without actually telling us what the content of the substances is and obviously without any proof of efficacy and any proof of safety. We have seen that in the past three years. Yeah, that sounds pretty terrifying that medication could potentially be inflicted on people with the power of the nation state behind it. That's just a really frightening development. Shall we go in and look at the first slide to look at some of the detail here, please, Philip? Yes, great. Thank you. Now, what we see here is we are about we are in a process where two legal instruments are subject to negotiations on the upper line of this uh, working stream, the international health regulations, this is ultimately an international agreement already itself that is in force since 2005. And that was the basis for calling out the COVID-19 pandemic. And so this legal instrument shall be amended uh, in a wide, widest possible way to give WHO more power. Um, it will be subject to a vote, these amendments, um, next World Health Assembly in May 2024, and only a simple majority will be sufficient for the member states to adopt these new health regulations. Noting we have 194 member states, and then, as I mentioned, just by way of an automatism, these new amendments will become uh, will enter into force into every uh, member state. Whereas we have, whereas we have uh, a second working stream concerning the new pandemic treaty, which is a totally new agreement um, that so far did not exist. And there we will have to, or the member states will have to observe a two-third majority at the, at the occasion of the next, next World Assembly. And then most significantly, there will be a period of 18 months during which within every member state there shall take place a parliamentary debate and ultimately a ratification process. So that gives a minimum, minimum amount of democratic legitimacy, whereas for the first legal instruments, the international health regulations, that will be just done by the World Health Assembly, and we can do nothing against it unless our government um, sends a note of rejection to the World Health Assembly's general director. And this is without, uh, with his outside of the reach of the people. This is totally within uh, the discretion of our governments. So we have no democratic control. Uh, for the rejection of these international health regulation amendments. So this is almost like a pincer movement from the World Health Organization, isn't it? These both derive from the WHO. And for yes. some strange, mysterious reason, they're both running concurrently at the same time. Yes, the purpose is actually to grant WHO much more power and much more financial means and strengthen their structures to what they call have a better pandemic prevention, better pandemic preparedness, and make sure uh, that these uh, also uh, substances of and drugs of all uh, ways of all kinds uh, will be equally distributed among the population, which they call the principle of equity. And it seems that this principle of equal distribution between the nations is more important than the fundamental rights that so far we have in, uh, written in the Article 3, Paragraph 1 of the International Health Regulations. They are crossed out and replaced by this principle of equity. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the equity that bothers me, it's what's being distributed that I find most concerning. But uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, pretty terrifying. Do you want to talk more detail about this slide or do you want to go into the next one? We can go into the content of the international rate of health regulations. What really should concern Is that, everybody? Uh, yes, the next slide, please. Yeah, yes. I, think, I think that's coming. There we are. Excellent. So we see here six points. And these six points 
are really uh, concerning to everybody who calls himself a Democrat, mm. for everybody who likes fundamental rights and thinks that actually we are the ones in power. We should, should self-define our government and the system under which we want to live. Most of all, we want to have an effective protection of human rights. Yes. So what we see are here these six points. And the good message about these very concerning elements is we can see them very clearly within the international health regulations. So they are in front of our eyes. And so I briefly give an overview and just a brief summary of Please. what, in my view, is are the most uh, frightening elements within these new amendments. So number one, the, the mechanism, that already existing mechanism for self-authorization of the WHO by mere declaration of a public health emergency of international concern. So the abbreviation for that is fake. Um, so this mechanism is extended, is widely extended, uh, not only to really threatening uh, diseases, but even to new variants of uh, flu, common flu, or even, as I said, under this concept of one health, it is extended to problems of climate change uh, or problems of whatever we find in the environment to be a potential threat. So that opens the door actually to a total abuse of power and so WHO can declare an uh, emergency situation for the entire globe without any real reason, without any justification. And most of all, there will be no remedy, no mechanism to revise this decision. There will be no checks and balances for that part. A public health emergency of international concern is what I say it is existing when I say it does. This is correct. This is they just need to whisper it into the microphone yeah. in, in Geneva yeah. and call it out. And that will change uh, the ordinary course of the entire globe. Can yeah. you imagine yeah. without any proof, without any real substance and evidence, they can just call it out and extend it, extend it, extend it. As we have seen it already, it was declared for three, more than three years for the purpose of COVID-19. So that we will see more of the same in the future. And the World then, Health Organization has been bad enough over these previous three years based on the very weak powers given by the 2005 International Health Regulations. What are yes. like with the draconian powers for the, uh, the amendments that will be Absolutely. passed in 2024 doesn't bear thinking about? Absolutely, John. That's exactly the concern. Now, for two, no, point number two, we see clear evidence in this new wording that the recommendations that so far were meant to be just non-binding recommendations will in the future have the character to be legally binding. And we can, if somebody would object to that, uh, go Im immediately into uh, the respective provisions, the amendments, which is among others, Article 13a, and Article 42, but there's a whole set also in the regime of supervising the implementation of uh, any new legally binding recommendation for the future. So if one member state even thinks, oh, we are not going to apply uh, mRNA-based vaccines, we are rather trying it with vitamin D and with good physical exercise, um, then this government will be put on the watch list and there will be the World Health Assembly to decide about sanctions against this government. So we can see that very clearly. The number three, which in my view is actually uh, the most concerning one, because WHO uh, shall be granted the global privilege of exercising the information monopoly, information control, with the right to censorship and, of course, the right of manipulating the people. This shall become the new normal. And, of course, we have seen that already in the past three years. We see it now, how difficult it is to maintain on YouTube 
or on Facebook and a, a deviating opinion and scientific information as soon as it, has come, as it comes to mRNA-based vaccines or any critics against WHO. So that's already in place. Uh, we have seen that, by the way, in this uh, event 201 exercise, uh, chapter number four, they speak explicitly in October 2019, they expli speak explicitly about this, what they call infodemic. They say, oh, wrong information might be as dangerous as a virus itself, so we have to fight against infodemic. We have to fight against disinformation. So all of that comes together. And if you manipulate long enough the public opinion, if there's only one information and source of information available, then ultimately you cannot have any science. You cannot have any true judicial system and fair trials. And ultimately you don't have any democracy. It's so, the same thing again. Truth is what I say it is existing when I say it is, and you're not allowed to disagree. This is just totalitarianism. This is the way to totalitarianism. It's a perfect tool in the hand of every dictator, mm. and we must oppose this principle, because we have been fighting for here in Europe, at least for more than 250 years, to have this freedom of information and freedom of speech uh, be protected. Uh, since the French Revolution, and now they just want to take it away mm. under the disguise of uh, health um, protection. Yes. So um, then, in, in four, point number four, which is very, uh, you know, concerning, and that's an objective point. There's no system, no mechanism that would actually challenge, would it allow to challenge WHO's decision? and uh, recommendations, so no checks and balances, excuse me, no checks and balances, um, which is a part, a very normal part of every government, of every democracy, uh, of every mechanism of power in order to make sure actually that there is a quality control, a quality management, and this we don't have it here. They didn't even try to do this quality control with respect to the past three years. So they didn't hold an after action review, something that is done in every government, that is done in military, that is done everywhere where humans do and undertake a huge investment with an external effect. You know, so this basic um, principle of quality control and quality management uh, was not performed by WHO for the past. So, and for the future, it will be not part of this uh, new set of international health regulations. That's very concerning. And number five, that's briefly said, of course, they will not assume any way, any kind of accountability for whatever they are doing. So there's no incentive actually to do things better. Uh, there's no incentive for WHO to avoid harm. Um, and they are even protected by full immunity. And here in Switzerland, they have their domicile. They even enjoy full tax exemption. So this is an absolute, you know, a well, recipe. We enjoyed full tax exemption. Yes, yeah, so this is actually a, a recipe and a free pass for WHO to abuse their powers yeah. because there will be no accountability, no punishment whatsoever. And so ultimately, question number six, with respect to fundamental rights, you don't even have to ask whether they want to write it back again into the International Health Regulations, Article 3, Paragraph 1. It will not matter, even if they would reintroduce uh, the fundamental rights principle in Article 3, Paragraph 1 of the International Health Regulations. I see no chance for an effective protection of fundamental rights and human dignity, as long as the entire population and the judges and uh, the politicians will only receive and view one global monopolized truth. Mm -hmm. So if we only know that all these substances, they are super effective, uh, they are super safe, and they make us strong, you know, what else could then a judge decide about these substances. Um, 
just to give one example of many. So I see fundamental rights and human dignity at the as of the result of such a concept, I see them uh, coming to an end. There will be no effective protection possible mm. with such a system of uh, international health regulations. And it's not being too melodramatic to say that this is what previous generations have fought and died to avoid. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and now it's just and now it's just being taken by stealth and our politicians just seem to be saying, oh, OK, fine. It is taken by stealth. Politicians don't know anything about these amendments and they just let it happen. The only good message I have, we have, is it takes place at plain sight. So once a person with a minimum amount of responsibility, once, once this person would understand what is going on here, actually nobody would probably wish to have such a uh, regime being imposed for the future, uh, for the rest of our lives, where somebody can tell us, oh, now, by the way, we have emergency, you, do, uh, you stay at home unless you have taken three shots of this highly experimental, very dangerous drug. Don't dare to even question uh, our orders. Don't go for a second opinion. Just take it. You know, nobody wants to have this as our new normal. But it's not even just our lives. I mean, we've seen in some vile regimes around the world, North Korea, for example, that the totalitarian powers have been perpetuated down several generations of dictator, oppressing whole groups of people. Yes, John. This is actually the most concerning aspect here. By having established this system, it will be, become very difficult to stop it. There will be no stop button for us. They can perpetuate and even strengthen their power, the WHO power, and combine it with the power of United Nations, combine it with the power of the G7 of the WH, the, uh, the WEF, World Economic Forum, and uh, introduce all kinds of new elements to this um, so-called anti-pandemic or pandemic uh, prevention. Uh, and indeed, e e yeah. even power to particular wealthy individuals who might be financing uh, some this of is these organizations. Absolutely key here, yes. Uh, WHO is funded only by 16 to 20 percent uh, by member states' ordinary payments. So, 80 percent uh, of the payments of the funding of WHO so far in the past years were extraordinary payments and from these extraordinary payments the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, together with Gavi which is an actually in cooperation with the purpose of selling and maximize the sales of uh, vaccines mm -hmm. they have obviously a business interest so the majority of um, the extra funding of WHO came from this conglomerate Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, together with Gavi. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is that out of this 80% of extraordinary payments, we have 80% again where, where payments are made under a certain condition that is defined by the sponsor. So it's a sponsor-driven financing of WHO, ultimately making WHO a puppet and marketing agency for the producers. In England, we have a saying uh, in, in the UK, uh, he who pays the fiddler calls the tune. Absolutely. That's such a great saying, making things so much easier to understand. I'm sure you have an equivalent saying in, in Swiss and German and French. <laughs> yes, we do have, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Probably in every country. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Should we go into the next slide, Philip? Yes, we can wrap it up. So all that together, what we have seen now, this new... Um, regime, these, you know, this revision, these new international health regulations, they are toxic by design. Um, because these amendments to the international health regulations, they allow the WHO to at any time suspend our constitutions, suspend human rights, and even international mandatory law uh, with a permanent effect. And they can extend it forever. 
uh, thereby assuming and abusing global power and, as I said already, causing maximum harm. And if you go to the last slide, um, all of this is done most notably with all elements of totalitarianism. They can do it with propaganda, with fear, um, push it through with executive power and without, obviously, our consent. Uh, we have never a chance and never a saying to say yes to these international regulations, uh, which most of what I just mentioned actually finds no legal basis in the constitution of WHO itself. There is no legal basis in the WHO constitution to make recommendations legally binding, and there is no legal basis in the WHO constitution to, to exercise propaganda and manipulate people into a harmful behavior and into giving their consent, which obviously is not an informed consent uh, without the correct information and the freedom to decide. And ultimately, there will be no remedy and no stop button. They can go on forever and forever. And this is why we have to say, not only stop uh, these international health regulations amendments, stop the process of negotiating immediately. So we have to put pressure on our political representatives. We have to put on a huge pressure on our governments and say the the content of these um, amendments in itself is anti-constitutional. It threatens our constitution, it threatens our future, our business, our lives ultimately. So stop negotiating about these kinds of harmful new regulations. We don't want them. So we have to increase power against that process. Yeah, thank you. As things stand at the moment, is this affecting all countries in the world? I mean, are we talking about the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Switzerland, Germany, France, Scotland, England, everywhere? Well, this is correct. It's actually affecting the 194 member states of the WHO. Yes. So that gives us a huge potential to resist here, to unite mm. over you know, the borders of our countries. And this is mm. what we do already here in Europe uh, mm. with the joint combined, you know, forces um, between the different countries. Even we reach out and have a good cooperation with our friends in Canada and in the United States. James Rogowski does a great work. Mm. Meryl Noss from Children's Health Defense. Mm. Uh, James Corbett, um, great work here. And we are about all of you know, in our communities to produce um, uh, letters that can be sent to our political representatives to put on some pressure and actually call them to stop negotiations. Stop these negotiations. That must be our message. Mm -hmm. And it has to be the head of state, actually, that sends the letter, I think, doesn't it, to say, no, this is not for us. So we have yes. to somehow get to heads of state through our yes. politicians too. Through our politicians, right. Ultimately, this notification of rejection must be issued by the government. And the stop uh, to halt these negotiations, of course, this is within the competence of the government. But the guardians for our democracy, these are the members of our parliaments. Mm. They are responsible to safeguard our rights, the constitutional order, and uh, make sure that the constitution is actually, will never become under threat. And that was actually the purpose of the presentation of 13th September mm -hmm. in Strasbourg uh, at this expert mm -hmm. hearing um, that was granted by um, some excellent members of parliament, uh, of the EU parliament. They gave us possibility to speak out you know, uh, Christine Anderson and uh, uh, Virginie Joron and Christian Teres. And so all of that, that was uh, organized um, by Maria hubmer Mock, um, a doctor from Austria. And uh, so the purpose of that was to shed light on this process from mm -hmm. different disciplines, not only from the legal discipline, but also from the medical discipline, then also from an 
criminal investigation perspective. So therefore, we had these eight experts there, even from the perspective of mass formation psychology, Professor Matthias Desmet from Belgium was there. So we covered the whole range mm. of uh, relevant disciplines to actually bring light into the dark because we are not informed. We are absolutely not informed by our media, not by our politicians. No. The, so the media has let us down despicably, in my view. I mean, if, if there were thousands of troops and tanks and helicopter gunships at our borders, we would see the threat and politicians would act. Yes. This is being done surreptitiously below the counter. This is a stealthy operation. And, uh, and to my mind, just as big a threat. This is it. Absolutely. John. They're, they're just drifting into this. The threat is either made up or self-produced, yeah. one way or the other. And but the end result is that the populations are controlled. The populations shall be controlled, and this is what we have to resist, because we have a universal right of self-determination, the yeah. self-determination of the people as, as collective, but also the right for self-determination of the individual. This is pre-existing to written law. It is pre-existing to governments. And it is written down, actually, in the United Nations Charter of 1945. It's in, this is Article 1. It was written down as a consequence of the two big world wars mm. to something that we never wanted to give up again. Mm. And now we put it at stake. No, this is absolutely not acceptable. Yep. So we need to um, try and mobilise our politicians, tell them about this danger. The fact that they haven't recognised this danger already is at least disappointing. We would expect them to be uh, vigilant of our uh, per personal freedoms, but it seems they're, they're not. Absolutely. So if we remind now, if, if world leaders are watching this and they all immediately uh, send these letters off to stop these um, regulations, that's good. If not, then the individual people that are watching need to contact their politicians to tell their heads of state to get their acts together. Absolutely. This is what we have to do, John. Yeah. Yes. Great. And let's hope a few more people do it as a result of this. F Philip, thank you so much. It's just so reassuring that people with your uh, understanding uh, are, uh, are working on this uh, to protect the human rights uh, of everyone. It's disappointing that the politicians are not doing it. But, uh, but uh, basically, on behalf of, uh, as far as I can speak for the population of the world, thank you for what you're doing. We, we really, really appreciate it. Oh, uh, thank you, John. It's a privilege to be here on your show. And number two, thank you for your work. And we are in this all together. There are yeah. so many experts now who speak out all together. And in my view, I'm convinced that these extreme regulations, they are radical radical by definition they are yeah. toxic by definition yeah. they will be they will not come into force because the people will resist we will do that all together so yeah. thank you very much for no. helping this process john yeah no no, no thank, th very th thank important you for work it. that you are doing great to talk to you i, I know you've got to scoot off somewhere else in europe now so your time is precious so th thank you very much thank you very much john, for having me all the best thank you you too